below $73 a barrel, holding on to a rally from five-year lows. Analysts predict a volatile adjustment phase that would lead to more erratic price movements. So what does the fallen energy mean for the economy and monetary policy? Joining us now is Peter Schiff, CEO at Euro Pacific Capital. Peter, this argument, this discussion about whether it will make the ECB more likely to move or not, this has really been occupying us for the last couple of trading days. Which camp are you in? Do you think that the ECB will embark on rather aggressive easing as a result of this drop in inflation? Well, first of all, falling oil prices are a good thing. They're good for the European economy. The only problem is the low prices aren't going to last. I think it's temporary. But the idea that Europe needs inflation is complete, utter nonsense. Economies benefit from falling prices. I mean, imagine if oil were free. I mean, what if Europeans could have all the oil they wanted and it didn't cost anything? I mean, wouldn't that be fantastic? So are you saying that the drop in oil that's really just temporary, we are going to see a stabilization at a, a slightly higher level and that means the ECB won't be doing anything? Well, I think the drop is temporarily because I think people are still factoring in a stronger U.S. dollar because they think the Fed is out of the QE business and they think the Fed is going to be raising rates in 2015. I think the Fed is going to be launching a much bigger quantitative easing program uh, than Europe and Japan combined. So I think when all the money printing uh, returns in the United States, you're going to see a big increase in oil prices for everybody. But the idea that deflation or low inflation is a problem, again, is wrong. I mean, if, if, if the cost of food goes down, that's a good thing. If the cost of health care goes down, that's a good thing. As the cost of living goes down, the people benefit. It's just government that wants inflation because politicians don't want to cut government spending. They don't want to deal with all the deficits they ran up to buy votes. So they want to bail themselves out by creating inflation. But the people will suffer from the inflation the central banks are creating. So this is Hans Redeker from Morgan Stanley. So may you explain to me what went wrong in Japan then? Because they had a deflationary environment for some time and uh, as, I, as far as I remember, it didn't do any good to Japan. Well, again, prices are not actually falling. In fact, prices are rising now in Japan at the fastest rate in years, yet the economy is back in recession. But you can't make a false logical conclusion. You can't say because they haven't had inflation in Japan and they also haven't had economic growth that it's the lack of inflation that is causing the lack of growth. Whatever problems Japan has, they would be worse if they had inflation on top of economic stagnation. The fact that price and prices haven't been rising, that's been a silver lining in the Japanese cloud. And so if politicians think that they can improve a weak economy by increasing inflation, all that will do is weaken an economy further. The problems with Japan are structural and they result in bad monetary policy. It's interest rates being too low and it's the government interfering with the free market trying to correct the imbalances that bad monetary policy has created. That's the same problem that they have in Europe. That's the same problem that we have in the United States. But instead of acknowledging the true problem and the source, all we're doing is making it worse by printing even more money and keeping interest rates even lower. Uh, it's me again. But when, when I look at global debt, so the IMF is suggesting that global debt is currently at 215% of global GDP. So in dollar terms, we are talking about 103 trillion US dollars. And if you see in this environment, inflation expectations potentially debasing, which would be the case in an environment where prices are falling, wouldn't that uh, have substantial negative implications for those people who have debt on their books is about liabilities and the valuation yeah, well, of those liabilities. The negative isn't implications it? isn't the lack of inflation, it's the enormous amount of debt. The debt is the problem. Now, there are people that think the way to solve the debt problem is to create inflation. I would rather see the debt restructured. I would rather see defaults than inflation because inflation is going to do much more damage to the economy than restructuring or defaulting on debt. But it's the debt that's the problem. And if you want to make the argument that inflation relieves debtors, I understand that. But you can't try to argue that it benefits the consumer, that it benefits the economy, because it doesn't. It, it, it interferes with economic growth. It impoverishes people. When the cost of living is going up, people are getting poorer.
I don't think that a 2% inflation level would actually make people poor. I think this is really in line with economic growth. Maybe if you're talking <laughs> about 5 or 6% I mean, inflation rate. Even if you rate. believe it's only 2%, prices are going up 2% a year. I mean, wouldn't it be better if they didn't go up at all? Or what if prices went down by 2% a year? That would mean that things would get cheaper every year, and so people would have a higher standard of living. But when inflation is robbing you of your purchasing power, and of course it compounds. You raise prices 2% a year every Every single year it really adds up over time but of course I don't even believe a lot of these government measures I think inflation is much more pernicious than 2% and of course you also have to look at the fact that if it wasn't for the government creating all this right. inflation prices would be going down that is the natural benefit of a market economy you increase your efficiencies you become a better producer you can produce more stuff for less money and the customer the consumer benefits from that reduction in price, but governments are stealing that benefit away by Peter, creating inflation. Peter, unfortunately, we're